The world's largest annual board game convention, the Eschen Spiel, is this October. And over 900 different tabletop games are going to be revealed and released there, meaning <laughs> there's a lot of new games coming right around the corner. And from these upcoming games, I've compiled my top 40 suggestions, personal picks, best bets, a few wild cards, and others to recommend. Are you going to end up with as many new games on your wish list as I have on mine? Well, let's find out in this month's extra large Essen edition of our Board Game Buyer's Guide. Hey there! I'm Chaz Marler and welcome to this month's extra special list. Now, to qualify to be included in this episode, a game must be coming out with an English edition either later this year or at the Eschenspiel Game Fair itself. There are still plenty of new games to choose from, starting with several civ building and historical games, such as Revive, in which one to four tireless tribes, each with unique abilities, explore a frozen earth thousands of years in the future to reach and repopulate large ancient cities. And each of these tribes will attempt to accomplish this with no fighting or direct conflict between each other. But don't worry, there are still plenty of different obstacles waiting for them, because with Revive's multiple intricate boards for each tribe to manage, survival is going to require lots of challenging choices to be made. And going from the far future back to the ancient past, there's Terracotta Army, featuring the work of talented artists laboring to build an assembly of statues. During the game, crafters collect resources, upgrade their workers, and seek favor with the Emperor's advisors in order to play a crucial role in the creation of the Terracotta Army. This game combines worker placement with competing for control of locations among the Terracotta statues, with the best work and placement gaining the player influence and points. And those points will be critical to success because only the most influential craftsperson, the one with the most of those points, will stand alone as the game's winner. And then, once you've amassed that army, whether inanimate or otherwise, spread that influence across the map in Mosaic, a story of civilization, in which leaders of ancient civilizations grow their people's population by building towns and cities, wonders, armies, technologies, and more across the Mediterranean. Now, at its heart, Mosaic is an action selection game encouraging players to take advantage of a set selection of options each turn to develop their own unique strategy and culture. And the goal of each action that's taken is to further one's influence across different regions on the map, because after three scoring rounds, the civilization with the greatest influence overall will be the only one that history really remembers. The other ones will be like those somewhat out of focus photos in your high school yearbook. They're like, I think, I think I remember that ancient culture. Mm, no, no, that was Ethiopia. Now I, I have no idea who, who that ancient culture was. Next, moving slightly from the Mediterranean to the Caliphate region, is Crescent Moon, where each player has access to a unique pool of abilities and actions from the Sultan to the Murshid, enlisting armies, mercenaries, or amassing resources and political influence. Each character in the game will require a different approach to play, because each one has its own specific objectives. The result is a cutthroat game of power and politics, which requires building symbiotic relationships with allies, undermining your rivals, and wisely picking your friends and enemies. And this section of civ building and historical games ends with Endless Winter, Paleo-Americans, in which players guide the development of tribes from nomadic hunter-gatherers to prosperous societies by migrating and settling in new lands, establishing cultural traditions, hunting Paleolithic megafauna, and constructing monumental megaliths. The game is designed to blend multi-use cards, area influence, tile placement, and set collection all together in one spiffy little package, unlocking multiple paths to victory. But yeah, accomplishing all of that is going to be no small trick. But I'm not worried, because board gamers are always ready to rise to the occasion as evidenced by the first of several sponsors that helped make this episode possible, the Great British Baking Show game from Ravensburger. Now, food is something that people seem to enjoy eating, especially baked confections. But even so, few have had truly great baking experiences 
Until now, in the great British baking show game, where a bevy of brilliant bakers race each other to recreate a round of recipes by completing a configuration of cakes and snacks. Players will need to choose whether they move quickly at all costs or take their time to select the best flavors for their baked goods while avoiding the dreaded soggy cards. Now, the cards themselves aren't soggy, of course, unless you dip your board games in milk, I suppose. R regardless, though, players can use help cards to select wild cards from the center of the table to step in and assist others, scoring extra points for sportsmanship. But before helping anyone else, Help yourself by following the link in this video's description to find The Great British Baking Show, available now at Target, on Amazon, and at friendly local game stores. And now, the spirit of sweet treats continues with a freshly baked batch of semi-cooperative games in which the players work together, for the most part, such as in the game Beast, where one player takes on the role of a magical, dangerous beast who must either conquer or be conquered by the other players who are cooperating to defeat it. The game is powered by decks of cards that are used to move across various terrain, while the beast attempts to cover its trail while traversing the same area covertly, and the hunters work together to reveal it. Winning will require more than just a smart haircut and a suitcase. It will also require hunters to work together if they want to outmaneuver and outplay the beast. And then, going from one beast to another, we have Feed the Kraken, a hidden roll deduction game supporting 5 to 11 sailors from three different factions who all find themselves aboard the same boat, each wanting to travel in different directions. Now, loyal sailors wish to dock the ship safely at the mainland, while pirates scheme to maneuver the ship into the Bermuda Triangle, and disillusioned cultists just want to serve the crew to their dark lord the Kraken for lunch. Now, in addition to its hidden roles, Feed the Kraken also incorporates a board representing the sea that your collective ship must navigate across, adding an interesting tug-of-war element to this game. It's an additional element that the players can use to their advantage as they bluff and bluster their way towards their team's true ultimate objectives. Also touting tenacious teamwork is La Familia, the Great Mafia War, in which two teams of two tangle for control of southern Italy's underworld in the early 80s. Split into two phases, the game shifts between periods of planning, during which the players develop their abilities and enlist fighters, and combat, where each family's orders are revealed and then executed. The game's combat system is designed, actually, to be both simple and innovative in an attempt to make every fight not only a physical duel, but a psychological one as well. In the end, the team that best combines and coordinates its abilities will be the one to muscle their way right into Sicily. And while La Familia is all about letting the villains in, Keep the Heroes Out is all about creating a sanctuary for sinister scoundrels. In this fully cooperative dungeon defense game, one to four monsters plot to protect their hard-earned gold from invading hordes of looters, known to surface dwellers as heroes. And these heroes keep barging into their underground city lair and rudely stealing all of their riches. Now, the treacherous team's goal, then, is to survive the threats from invading heroes by protecting each room of their dungeon. Now, if their main treasure is taken, the game ends and the cooperating creatures all lose. So, protect those pearls by proactively punishing those pesky pillaging paladins, and you just might come out okay. But not to be outpunished is the next game, Human Punishment, the beginning. Come on, it's, it's right in the name of the game, right there. And this is a game where a faction of sci-fi freedom fighters try to prevent the secret machine revolution. But if we all know about the revolution, how secret can it be? Regardless, machine spies are everywhere and are actively looking to corrupt the human players. The game is designed to be a semi-cooperative hybrid of pick-up and deliver mechanisms along with social deduction and can even be combined with the game Human Punishment Social Deduction 2.0 for an even heftier, elaborate experience, which sounds amazing. But you know what? At the same time, I gotta admit, there's also something to be said for simplicity, such as the straightforward nature of many card games, such as this section of card games that we're about to get into, ranging from elegantly streamlined to staggeringly complex. 
Starting with Split, which presents players with two discard piles of numbered cards and one goal. On the table, place a card with a number that fits between the numbers on those two piles. Then, the next player moves the played card to the top of one of those discard piles, creating a new number gap to fill, plays their card, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, there's several other twists and tricks that players will have at their disposal, but the essence of Split is just about as fundamental of a card game as they come. And building then on those fundamentals is the Great Split, which has a similar name, but actually is a completely different game. In the Great Split, players draft cards to collect riches, such as gems and gold and artwork. And depending on how each player builds their collection of cards, the various riches will take on different values. So the cards they keep will become very, very important. Ah, but there's the rub. Players start each round by splitting their cards into two groups and then passing both groups to the player on their left. But then only one of those two piles is going to be returned back to them, which begins each round with a severe case of I split, you choose, requiring players to create the perfect piles to puzzle and pester their opponent, even though they are ultimately at the mercy of their opponent's decision. Huh. And as if that wasn't enough, for a little less mercy, perhaps none, there is the push your luck card game, No Mercy, again, it's right there in the title, also known as the game Hit. In this game, players want to draw cards to gain points, but they don't want to draw too often because overdoing it will cost them everything that they've gained up to that point. So this is accomplished by flipping over cards from the deck and placing them in front of the current player, who can also steal all the cards of the same number that other players have in front of them if they want to. And after each draw, the player can either stop or continue, but if they draw a number that's already in front of them, everything that they've accumulated up to that point is all gone. So in the end, whosoever remaining cards have the highest combined sum wins the game. And while No Mercy requires a lot of tactical decisions to be made in the moment, another game, Mage Noor, encourages a more strategic approach to what it calls a spellcrafting game. Centered around ability-driven cards, Mage Noor complements its dual-driven environment with a resource pool that's shared between both players, a spell-crafting system that's intended to be simple yet engaging, and six different classes of cards, each with their own focus and specialty, plus a mechanism for unleashing powerful plays and devastating effects. And another game that sounds similar in premise, but with its own distinct flavor to its gameplay, is the two-player tactical card game Duelists, where champions from all over the known world meet to compete. Now, every character in this game comes with their own unique deck of cards featuring different abilities, defenses, and attacks. But the damage from those attacks isn't applied to their opponents directly, but to their opponent's deck of cards, thereby limiting their rival's options the more damage that they take and the more cards that they lose. And once a player can no longer fill their hand with cards, well, they've lost the battle and must surrender to return another day. Uh, kind of like the games in the next section of our list, games that have also returned, previously published ones that are now being re-released in various ways, which we'll dive into right after a brand new game that helped bring you this episode, Nightfall from Red Raven Games. In Thornmar Abbey, an ancient order of holy knights watches over a sealed portal to the underworld. And now, after decades of peace, that seal has weakened and demons are starting to emerge from the rift. Only the brave knights that watch over it stand a chance of protecting the elders and stopping an army of monsters from flooding into our world. Nightfall is an asymmetrical team game for two teams of one to six players, each with a variety of special powers. The knights must protect the elders and withstand the demons until dawn, while those demons seek to break the seal to the underworld before morning. The game also features a campaign mode in which one to two players read stories while exploring the map of a haunted valley, trying their path as they wander through crumbling churches, a sinister forest, and a dark mountain to stop the demons before the final battle at Thornmar Abbey. Nightfall is now available, so follow the link in this video's description to redravengames.com or wander your way into your own friendly local game store to find it today. Before night falls, like so, five.
5 p.m. at the latest. Find it today before the before five. Continuing now with games that have re-emerged from the rift with new versions, we start with the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, first published in 2014, which introduced the gaming community to interior design for the bazaar at heart by challenging aspiring contractors to develop luxurious castles while also attempting to achieve the most victory points over their opponents. Now, a collector's edition of the game is available, which features all new artwork, a dual-sided scoreboard, new king's favors and bonus cards, previous expansions, two new expansions featuring royal decrees and towers, eight 3D miniatures, support for a fifth player, and, you guessed it, more! There is so much stuff packed into this version of the Castles of Mad King Ludwig that this edition seems almost as outrageous as the actual castles themselves. But, oh, now perhaps an even more outrageous deluxe edition of a game is Kingdom Builder Empire Edition, a super-sized version of the game from 2011. This product packs piles of plastic player pieces, such as custom-shaped plastic houses with a different design for each player color, 3D castles, all new artwork, twist cards that add new rules to the game, and Bakelite location tokens. And additionally, in order to accommodate the larger houses, all the player boards are 25% larger as well. Apparently, if you're gonna have all those beautiful bits, you're gonna need more space to put them all. That's very thoughtful of you, actually, Kick the Builder. You, you truly are an Empire edition among board games. Turning now to another remake that's slightly less ambitious of a production, but still, just as anticipated, is the new version of Fjords, which was first published back in 2005. This tile-laying game takes place in two different phases. First, players explore the fjords around them by laying landscape tiles, creating a map that serves as the game board. Then, the players travel that map, claiming as many areas as possible, with the winner being the player who claims the most land. Now, personally speaking, I've been waiting a really long time for fjords to be reprinted, so I am really looking forward to this. And even though this game has a definite Carcassonne vibe to it, it also introduces a few of its own logical twists. And if twisting logic is your thing, then the deluxe edition of Cat in the Box has got you covered. Billing itself as, quote, the quintessential quantum trick-taking card game for cool cats, the color of cards played in this trick-taking game isn't defined until the card itself is played. Players then hypothesize how many tricks they're going to win and place tokens on a community research board as they play their hand. In addition to the tricks, connecting tokens on the research board also scores some more points for the players. And who doesn't want that? The game's new Deluxe Edition supports two to five players, features recessed player and research boards, plastic player pieces, and in a surprise move that nobody was expecting, more. And now, going back even further to 2003, is a reprinting of Santiago, one of the most cutthroat games about watering little plants that I have ever played. As the game progresses, tiles representing different crops are auctioned off to the players and then placed onto the game board by their owner. The fields are then watered, but water is scarce. So holding back enough money from the auction to still be able to bribe the person who controls that water Probably a good idea, because in the end, the player that yields the best crops will emerge victorious, with the other players ending up all wet. Rim shot there. All wet. But dum dun -tsh. And while those are games that are being reintroduced with a fresh coat of paint, several other old-timey favorites are being reintroduced as completely new variations, such as Splendor, which has been reimagined in Splendor Duel, a two-player only game that isn't an expansion, but its own standalone game that retains some of the mechanisms of its predecessor. Its gameplay is also, reportedly, designed to be more complex, more dynamic, interactive, tense, and mean. And that's straight from the press release. That's not just adding a word for word's sake. It's, it's meant to be pretty brutal at times. So. For those who want to avoid as much direct competition while still playing a game that is plenty mean, 
There's also Horizons of Spirit Island, which is built upon the core cooperative mechanisms of the original Spirit Island, featuring five new spirits designed to be ideal for those playing for the first time. This new Spirit Island adjacent title is still backwards compatible with the original, but to play the expansions like Jagged Earth, a copy of its predecessor will also still be needed. And another island that's full of new challenges is King of Monster Island, the next evolution in the King of Tokyo game series. But unlike the original King of Tokyo, King of Monster Island is a fully cooperative game in which a militia of amassed monsters must mitigate the machinations of a malevolent, mischief-making mastermind. In addition to using new dice options to work together, players also collect energy and cards, can call in support, move around the island for the best advantage, and have access to different allies that they can level up to unlock powerful new abilities. King of Monster Island seems to take the foundation that's been laid by the previous games in its series and move them into an interesting new direction. And another remake that's been taken into a different direction is Sky Mines, based on Mombosa from 2015. Now, where Mombosa was about spreading trading posts throughout Africa, Sky Mines applies those mechanisms towards mining the moon. Finally, a use for the moon. Players expand their operations by investing resources in mining companies. But the heart of this game is a unique card programming and hand management system which requires careful and clever planning ahead of time. Additionally, the combinations of company abilities change each game, offering a wide variety of different synergies and strategies to explore. But there may be even more to explore in Northgard Uncharted Lands a game of conquest and exploration set in the Age of Vikings and based on the Northgard video game. As in the video game version, Conquest of Northgard requires players to cleverly manage resources and construct buildings, level up their units, and upgrade their clan's specialties. But the board game version focuses on streamlined rules to provide a fast-paced experience which ends either after seven turns or when a player controls three closed territories containing several different types of buildings. The game's variety of map layouts, resources, and options are all designed to make Northgard Uncharted Lands a challenge again and again. Perhaps as challenging as the next game that helped bring us this episode, Challengers from Z-Man Games, which invites you to assemble a team to compete and win the world's greatest Capture the Flag tournament. Oh, what form will your team take? From outer space aliens to deep sea creatures, infallible krakens to inflatable rubber duckies, improbable allies work together to help make your dream team a success. The Challengers is an interactive deck management game in which one to eight different teams compete, tournament style, to outmaneuver their opponents and bring home the trophy over the course of two different phases. In the deck phase, team captains choose new members for their crew from among 75 distinct characters. Then, in the match phase, those teams go head to head to compete to capture the flag, winning that round's trophy, qualifying for the final, and perhaps going on to win the entire tournament. Oh, ho, ho, what a Thursday that would be. Jump in by following the link in this video's description to find challengers and start assembling your own dream team of wizards and aliens, cats, robots, krakens, and more. A pleasant perk of presenting our program is purposefully populating the performance with a parcel of personal picks. These are the games on my personal wish list, starting with Creature Feature, a game of betting and bluffing starring classic monsters of the silver screen. In this game, designed by Richard Garfield of Magic the Gathering fame, movie agents work to fill monster movie roles with actors who they represent. Everyone has the opportunity to audition for different roles, and winning a part scores points. But there is a twist, because if a player's star ever has a lower value than their co-star, <laughs> can't have that happen, they can't win unless everyone else stops competing for that film, resulting in an all or nothing battle of either blockbusters or box office bombs. But that is the filmmaking business, I suppose. And whether you see filmmaking as a business or an art, one thing that we can all agree is an art, is art. 
uh, such as in the case of Fake Art Inc., in which expert art brokers must covertly collect fake masterpieces and then distribute them into the market. I mean, after all, even patrons of the fine art still need to turn a profit. Players make money by selling artwork cards, whose price is determined by the number and location of other genuine and fake cards that have previously been revealed. And with the right timing, one broker can collect quite the stash of cash, even for artwork with no value. And you know, if you find that this video has value, well, then sharing it with someone who may also be looking for new games to discover would be priceless. But for now, the next game that has me over the moon is Federation, in which space delegates compete to become the most influential and prestigious faction in the entire galaxy. Galaxy sold separately. Federation is a Euro game in which each round is divided into two main steps. First, each player plays an ambassador and sends a spaceship out on a special mission. Then, players receive their income, fund major projects, and pass new laws. Every action and option across both of these phases are opportunities for players to accumulate prestige. And in the end, the player with the most prestige wins the game and then spreads their presence across the entire intergalactic planetary federation. Meanwhile, though, there's also an opportunity to expand one's presence down here on Terra Firma in Uptown, where the city's top civic developers take part in a competition to design the best and most prestigious street. This is done by playing project cards to build houses, service centers, and different office blocks. A crafty contractor can also append structures to the buildings of their rivals, so be sure to keep an eye out for the opposition while continuing to build skyward because the competition up there <laughs> can get really, really fierce. Oh, but ramping up the economic engagement even more, we can dive into Shark, a new printing of a stock trading game that's slightly reminiscent of Acquire. In Shark, salty stockbrokers buy and sell shares and then roll the dice to place markers which determine how the stats of four different companies will change. Placing a marker gains every player certain amounts of cold hard cash, so actually tanking a company's share price may sometimes be the best option. Once the game ends, players cash out all their shares and the fishy financier with the most money wins while the others are left fiscally underwater. And from wild animals below the water to wild cards on its surface, we have the game Captain's Log, the first of several wild card picks and perhaps the most belabored segue between sections that I have ever written. These wild card picks are titles that stood out as offering something unique, experimental, or just caught my eye. Is that okay? Captain's Log, for example, is a 1-4 to four player sandbox game, meaning that players are given as many options as possible to play out the experience however they like. Players start the game with a ship from the colonial period and then compete to become the most famous captain of all time. Along the way, they'll have to decide which nations, if any, they want to ally themselves with, which will provide a variety of perks, but also new trials to overcome. Sandbox games always interest me, but their open nature inherently provides them with some unique design challenges that they have to overcome. But no, no, if you want a challenge to overcome, my friend, then may I introduce you to Turing Machine, a unique competitive deduction game in which prospective puzzlers question a proto-computer that uses a series of punch cards to answer questions and provide clues toward solving a variety of logical mysteries. Now, the goal of the game is to decipher a secret code before the other players do by cleverly crafting questions to ask the machine. The game includes over 7 million different problems to deduce, from dirt simple to mind-staggeringly complex. This is an exceptionally clever design, resulting in puzzles that can require a lot of mental maneuvering to master. Or something a little easier on the old brain meat? How about just rolling a bunch of dice? As in the game, Gang of Dice. The premise of this game is that a group of gangsters has gathered to determine who among them will replace their retiring boss. This decision is made, of course, by rolling a bunch of dice. 
Now each round, a specific dice combination is revealed. The goal is to roll a bunch of dice and then obtain the highest result without matching the current combination. Whoever accomplishes that wins the dice rolled by their competition, and in the end, the player that's accumulated the most dice wins and becomes the gang's new boss of rolling a bunch of dice. By contrast though, a game in which players want to accumulate combos is Wild Style, where the city is your canvas, as players tag locations across urban districts with their own color. This is done by collecting sets of cards with matching location icons, which allow placing a tag on a hex with that icon anywhere on the board. Interestingly though, there's no turns in this game, and each player takes their actions all at the same time in any order they choose. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how a set collection card game works in real time where everyone's drawing cards and placing tokens all simultaneously. Sounds to me at least like Wild Style is a wild card that could be a wild time. Ha! That's wordplay, that is. And then there is a wild card pick featuring wild game, at least on its cover, Luck Tales. Yes, I picked this one just because of its box art. But besides that, this game also intrigues me because it's all about taking chances. See, each player receives a card, and after they do, they have a choice to make. Will you keep your precious new card or swap it out for one of the other two bright, shiny, candy-like cards sitting on the table? Oh, but just because the players may take chances on swapping their cards doesn't mean that they rely solely on blind luck. Because as the other players drop out of the round, they reveal their cards, and each revealed card means additional information is available for the remaining players. Also, that box art. All right, up next are our best bets, which start with an honorable mention of sorts, a game that I know is not only on a lot of people's best bets lists, but also helped make this episode possible. It's Flamecraft from Lucky Duck Games. You are a flame keeper. Congratulations. A craftsperson skilled in the art of conversing with small, magically talented dragons, using your abilities and enchantments to aid both dragons and shopkeepers so that they may delight customers with their fiery expertise. In Flamecraft, one to five flame keepers gather items, place dragons, and cast enchantments to enhance the shops all across town. And if you're fortunate enough to attract fancy dragons to a shop, then you'll have opportunities to secure an even greater reputation, because the flame keeper with the most reputation will achieve the illustrious title of Master of All Flamecraft and usher in a new dragon-based economic era. And then we all live like kings. Follow the link in this video's description to find Flamecraft, which is searing hot and available right now in stores and at LuckyDuckGames.com. Oh, and let's keep that heat rising with our official best bets, releases with either a proven track record, rave reviews, or both. If you're looking for a new hobby board game, then, in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into, such as Oathsworn Into the Deepwood. The anticipation for and appreciation of this game that I have seen thus far has been through the roof. Oathsworn focuses on narrative choices and miniature combat encounters, featuring a book with scripted battles in which the players have to outwit and outplay AI-driven monsters and enemies using a push-your-luck combat system that requires finding the balance between hitting harder and missing completely. And tying that all together is an underlying campaign that incorporates legacy-style modifications and surprises. Oh, really neat. But if dungeon crawling itself is a bit too passe for you, <laughs> well, then keep your eyes peeled, because you may want to check out the game with one of the most unique themes in our entire list, Lacrimosa, in which a collection of composers compete to complete Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's final work of music. This is accomplished by playing through two different timelines, the present and the past commissioning the missing parts of the Requiem from other composers, and gathering the resources needed to finance the musician throughout his career. As a result, the patrons need to optimize their resources and finances in order to support both their best version of the story and their relationship with Mozart himself. And 
while you're piecing history back together, try designing an ancient city district in Acropolis, where Greek contractors built housing, temples, markets, gardens, and barracks, growing their section of the city and raising its prestige with harmonious planning that conforms specific rules. Acropolis is a tile placement game in which players puzzle out the best layout for their borough, placing different city sections over on top of each other to achieve the best layout and highest score. And while, yeah, overlapping tiles does mean missing out on some points, the scoring of certain other tiles actually is improved by their elevation in your city. So there's always this balancing act going on while selecting the best city design. Or instead of worrying about building an entire city, who needs that, you could zoom in and focus on the construction of one single solitary historical structure in the Contractors expansion for the Red Cathedral, which introduces 10 new guilds that can be combined with those from the base game. This extension of the game also includes a new board and blueprint cards, content for its solo mode, and additional content that qualifies as more. And for those who enjoyed the original Red Cathedral, this expansion seems like a slam dunk. Especially since the addition of the new contractors offer 30 different new ways to play it. It is a great variation on its original, a concept that perhaps is even truer for the biggest bestest bet in this board game bundle, Great Western Trail Argentina, which features gameplay elements similar to its predecessor, Great Western Trail, along with new features and a few twists of its own, such as a new type of worker, farmers, and different paths along the game board to offer more choices for the players. And while making money has been made easier in this version as compared to its original, there's also more actions, options, shortcuts, and cards to manage as well. Yeah, all the money in the world isn't going to tell you which of those two cards in your hand you should play next, Kevin. <laughs> Sorry. Regardless though, if you enjoyed the original Great Western Trail, then Argentina may provide you with even more great game to enjoy. Because <laughs> if it's one thing that I have learned, it is that even after going through all these tantalizing titles, there are always more games to enjoy. So continue on to the latest Momentum episode, where we're counting down which games are gaining popularity and finding out why. Or check out any of the other Watch It Played informative instructional videos that we have here on the channel. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching and take care.